Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a wonderful Sunday evening, beautiful Sunday evening. Um, it's not so hot, um, <clears throat> not wet, and uh, it's interesting. There's a, a gentleman called White Yardy. He's a Jamaican, white guy in the UK, and he was fuming. If you saw that video, he was fuming to say that people were saying, you guys just complained so much about the, the sunshine that was out recently. And by complaining about the sunshine, what you had, you had a situation whereby the rain came and the sun gone. Same just vex, man. Why the other vex? Why the other vex and say, you guys need to go back in some freezer. Go into the freezer and live. <laughs> and I, I tend to agree with him sometimes because uh, people complain so much of the the weather the weather is um gotta accept the weather the weather is beautiful you know so so that's it there you know what i mean but anyway it's a uh, sunday night um the day before monday uh the day before people um go back on the track jack i mean many people still don't follow the normal uh monday to friday thing many people have their different ways of how they do things but i just want to say um welcome and good afternoon and uh, and yeah, I'm I'm gonna be just tapping in quickly on I call it my inspirational motivational night tonight, you know. And uh, we we've we've had uh, a few days of some sort of uh, what should I say excitement in the air, excitement in the air with um, the new prime minister. Oh, I'm playing a little Drake. I like this music called Passion Fruit, and it's it's my it's an uh, instrumental which I really love and and touch wood let's hope that Facebook don't if you see I go block or something like that Facebook will just take it away but I just started because I like the music it's really chilled and it is what I play like on a on a Sunday evening um, very lovely music you know um, so um, if, if you don't mind <clears throat> I'd appreciate if you share this video as well. Good evening. Just share this video. As you come on, share this video. Um, someone just sent me a, a video a while ago of some DJ cussing off Boris. <laughs> laba laba. Um, a virgin from Birmingham. Just <laughs> uh, I can't play it because it's um, it has some expletives, expletives in it, you know. Um, I think you can play it in my house, you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, but it's a very, very funny, very funny video. Um, for the few days, I've also been playing a lot of um, um, Aicha Candy, which is a Jamaican DJ, just tapping into your roots. I think one of the most important thing we got all while to do is to tap into our roots, make sure we don't forget where we come from as, as much as possible, you know. But yeah, it has, it has been... Uh, uh, a very what should I say interesting few days it has been a very interesting few days um, with the new Prime Minister Boris Johnson and uh, and of course on, on a discussion like this I, I do would appreciate um, persons um, share their views share their concern I might not dis agree might disagree but I'm keeping this floor a bit open um, but since he became prime minister, there's been a lot of announcements um, which has been made. Um, there seemed to be the clear focus for Brexit, October the 31st. But at the same time, there have been some raft of different policies which have been um, highlighted and identified. And, uh, and it seems like the focus is not just on, the focus is not just on, on the whole Brexit and being very straight on with Brexit but looking at other issues as well right and um, and and the two one you can see you can see the topic which which I set out there two one is I think it's 20 or 20,000 police 20 to 20,000 20 to 20 second 22,000 police um, that Boris is going to start to but the Prime Minister 
uh, vision is to recruit and uh, and as well what is back on the table which is very interesting is 500,000 uh, persons uh, amnesty to 500,000 500, illegal aliens right person immigrant um, you know so uh, this is something that Boris actually mooted when he was mayor yeah love that tune you put up on IG the other day oh yeah that's Ija Candy I don't think you're born it take me back way thanks for that reminder yeah oh you're born <laughs> Ija Candy um, um, welcome to persons on Instagram land yeah so so while there is the key uh, discussion on Brexit which is crucial and fundamental one of the things I always say one of the reasons why we need to deal with this Brexit thing very quickly and just shut it down is because there's so much other things so much other issues that need need to be addressed so much other issues need to be addressed not just the Brexit and uh, and one of the reasons why we, we've got to deal with this Brexit thing soon hook or crook deal or no deal I, I strongly believe in the deal or no deal factor really strongly believe in that because anyone who is in negotiation have to keep um, all different options open you know but five of the things that Boris has promised to do that have nothing to do with Brexit and I was just looking at them and and one of them is uh, bulking up the police force you know you know you know what he's talking about tackling crime high up on the new PM's agenda he has vowed to reverse austerity cuts to police numbers and recruit an extra 20,000 officers by 2022 okay and one of the things that I also said when um, when, when talking about the new Prime Minister and people were asking me what are some of the key things that the Prime Minister really need to bring on the front line and one of the things I said was crime crime has got to be at the top of the agenda crime is something which has got to be at the top of the agenda and yes it was a conservative government that actually played a part with the austerity you know after northern rock and the world recession and everything something has had got had to be done about the world um, financial implications and how things were running with the UK. So they cut everything. Everything was cut. Chop, chop, chop. George Osborne cut off everything. Um, however, you know, I'm of the view that it is better late than never. And I'm of the view that, okay, um, yes, it was um, the Boris government and the Conservative that made that cut and somehow may have had an impact or had an impact directly or indirectly on an increase in knife crime um, by by putting in the 20,000 is really good and for Sadiq Khan, Sadiq Khan also said that uh, it is good as well and he welcomed that everybody has welcomed it um, the, the, the snag at the moment is how will they deliver such because the trainers are, are limited at the moment they're, they're limited in training and many people have been saying about what about the level of story, um, the level of training and the diversity that these officers will have, you know? So that is something there to be considered. <clears throat> the second one is tax cuts for high earners, you know? One of the most headline grabbing, divisive Pledge of Johnson campaign for Tory party leadership promised to cut tax for high earners. Um, people have to pay a 40% leave in anything they earn over 50,000 on the new prime minister's plan. The threshold for this higher rate of tax will be raised to 80,000, a move expected to save workers up to 3,000 and wealthy pension as much as 6,000. However, with the proposal means savings for some, it also translates to 9.6 billion for the government. You've got to ask a question, and many people are saying, okay, Boris is actually, you know, or the Prime Minister or the Tory government is sorting out their boys, you know, by giving tax break to those who earn more. What is the rationale behind it? That is something. You know, when I think about it at the same time, I believe that um, tax break is good in all different respects, you know, but how it is quantified, how it is qualified is, is another issue. So that is something. Potential amnesty for illegal immigrants. Um, Boris Johnson said he vowed to offer amnesty to 500,000 immigrants in the UK illegally during his first appearance in the common as PM, but he suggested it might, might be, but he suggested it might be on his to-do list now I watching the question time I was watching that question and when that lady asked him that MP asked him a question and it came back to him not that it came back to him I believe he was already prepared for it because they normally prepare for question time and uh, 
he said he he had it on his um, agenda for years. And those who remember Boris, remember when he was mayor, that was something which was muted and many people welcomed that. Because right now in the system in the UK, there's an underground community. You've got persons who are here in this country. Um, you know, people are here illegally for many different reasons. They're here illegally because of one, they overstay, um, things happen, fall in hardship times and whatever like that. And, uh, you know, difficult to go back. They've got their families and all those sort of things. And they're somewhat maybe, uh, you know, underground. Yeah, that's the word underground. They're illegally. Some who, are, who come here illegally um, through the channel or whatever like that. But there are different ways, yeah? Solving the social care crisis. Prime Minister said, outside the doors of number 10 on the first day is seriously important. There are held to be promises. And he said, he will fix, he said, my job. He said, my job is to fix the UK's social care crisis, which may have been seen as, ins as significant by many. He said, my job is to save you or your parents or grandparents from the fear of having to sell your home to pay the cost of care, Johnson said. So he said he's announcing on the steps of Downing Street that we'll fix the crisis in social care. School funding, that is something else. Promise to raise school funding to 5,000 for every secondary school pupil. A pledge that looks great in headline, but one that Schools Week suggested would only amount to 0.1% bump in funding. Yeah? And uh, so I, I just sort of set those out there. And, and there's many more. And, and it's not to sort of bore persons on a Sunday evening with politics. But it's looking at the opportunities, you know? And I want to go first with the the, the police. There, there's been such a, a cry, right? There's been such a cry for a long time for more police, okay? And with the massive onslaught of knife crime which has been happening, many people have been saying, bring back police, bring back police, bring back more police. I tend to, to differ in certain ways because I'm of the view that the more the cry for more police, especially from the community, it is actually showing that or accepting that somehow the community has failed. I don't know if anybody would agree with me on that particular point. Would you say that the community has, has failed in order to want more police on the street, on the beat? That's a question that I put out there. Uh, is the police the answer? But the reality is that it is better to be a part of the solution. Yeah, may not be the complete answer, but, be, but a part of the solution. Because um, Bobby's on the beat is helpful. But this is something which I, I considered as very crucial as well. Once the announcement was made, I said, Waboom. Instead of being a doubting Thomas, or instead of being someone who is actually saying, well, too late, you know, or, you know, people are not joining the police force is now is an opportune time hi Christine are you now is an opportune time for persons to actually join the police force right to let diversity um, reflect you know today Corbyn um, in an interview and they asked him the question what do you think of the 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 new set of the, the diverse candidate that, that Boris Johnson has appointed. Diverse. You know, Kwasi Teng. Kwasi Kwateng. Um, Dave, um, James, James Cleverly. You know, Pretty Patel, Sajid Javid, and others. And the raft of ladies who, who is in the cabinet. What do you think? And Corbyn said this, which is really good. He said, it is good that the the green benches or parliamentarians are now actually looking a bit like the nation, but much more work needs to be done. Companies need to also reflect that in the boardroom as well. And he stayed far away from Clive Lewis, who's, who in a tweet to James Cleverly, tweeted that James Cleverly and all those other black persons who are in the cabinet have sold their souls, you know. Corbyn stayed away from that because one of the things that I respect about Jeremy Corbyn is that Jeremy Corbyn don't take personal swipe at people. He doesn't have a time for that. That is one thing. And also it was one of the qualities of Boris as well. 
don't take personal swipe at in at persons in politics you know um, the word bitterness in politics is something which has got to go I, I strongly believe that there's got to be this um, this level of what's the right word should say responsible politics you know and how can they be responsible politics? All politics can be responsible, but I strongly believe that they need to be a responsible politics, the words that we speak, you know? Um, I never like when there is um, uh, an election and those who are campaigning are campaigning on the weakness of the other party or the other side. What they should be campaigning on is what they are gonna do. What is their policy? What is in their manifesto? That is what I call responsible politics, and let the chips fall where it goes, you know. So, <clears throat> so let's deal with this police bit now. I, you know, you know for years, and, and I don't know what um, Simon Woolley is going to be a key player in this. Not too sure what Lee Jasper is actually saying as yet. Not too sure what uh, Peter Herbert as well. Not so sure what um, Leroy Logan is actually saying about. The, the request for more police. They say they're going to be a police sort of, um, what should I say, team that will do all these sort of appointing and getting things going. I think this is an opportune time. I've got a friend who has a son who is in the police force, you know, and his son telling him a lot of things. And, uh, and his son sort of explained to him the difference that he makes as a black man on the street as a police officer. You know, sometimes can diffuse maybe something which is a bit tense. But the other side of the coin is that that same um, b son, no, friend of my son of my friend uh, uh, was a police officer. Say so he also gets a kickback effect, whereby they call him sellout, uh, and they will call him um, um, different names to say that he has actually, uh, you know, um, you know, that you know. You know, he, he has he has somewhat, um, you know, a, a part of the Babylon system, you know. So he's got that sort of, there's two sides of the coin there, you know. But I believe it's so crucial. And uh, let me hear what a couple of persons are saying. Are you sure the Tories will give an amnesty for 500 illegal immigrants? Um, Joyce Pettis, I don't know. All I'm just trying to say is that Boris Johnson is something which he said many years ago. I don't know if you remember, but it is something that he has been talking about. And it is not about the Tories. It's about the government. It's what the government, because that is something which has got to be um, um, discussed you know, before something like that can take place. So I don't know. But uh, it, is, it is something which is in motion, and it is something to be discussed, and it is something to be welcomed. And I'm sure like persons like yourself, Joyce, as a lawyer, you will actually try to see how you can also play a part in the whole process and to approach the government and use your office. You see, we have got to reach at a point now where we use our office to say to the government, and this is what we need to say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a solicitor, I'm an immigrant, immigration lawyer. You said you're going to do it. What are you doing? This is the time now for members within the community, people within the community, instead of um, being negative sometimes, is to go to your member of the parliament, your councillor, and say, I understand that the prime minister, you know, said this. Can you put the pressure on him to follow up on this? Because I know I have clients, persons who are genuine, but they are falling on hard times. Can you put the pressure on them? That is what we should do. That was because he has given it to us in our hands, you know, and challenged the government, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we should do, you know. Because I do recall when I was on the cutting edge leading with the airfare, APD duties and the airfare tax, and we had a meeting with Virgin. We had a meeting with British Airways and to say that we want to boycott um, them because of the high fares, you know, like now in the holiday periods, you know, air, air fares are very high. And lots of people, there are letters that were set out, and these letters were set out to um, for persons within the community that they can write to their members of parliament and they can say to them, this is what we want, blah, blah, very, very, very. And the community now had came on force, and there was some reprieve, I must say. There was some reduction, you know. Didn't go as far as how I think it should have gone, but anyway, there was some sort of action based on the activity of the community. 
So therefore, I believe that the community need to now also be proactive in all these things. So therefore, one, and this is my thing, one is to now start to challenge the Boris, jo Boris Johnson government on the, the, um, the proposal and the thought. He didn't make a promise, yeah, but it is something that he has been talking about from he was mayor. Anna Cooper, how are you? Um, you know, so Miguel said Boris should be given a chance. Christine said, yes, yeah, Leroy Logan should be consulted, consulted on this issue. Um, I don't think the word consulted is it, but I think he should play a key part in it uh, as well, um, you know, in regards to the knife crime. I, I believe personally, Leroy, they need to play a fundamental role in the world process, especially in diversity and um, with the Black Police Association. And I'm going to be getting um, one or two of them on the show. I've had Leroy on the show and Leroy on my program already. Talk about that. Um, not taking personal swipe is a cornerstone of good politics. I hate to see the tat for tat nonsense. Totally agree with you, Christine. It is boring sometimes, you know, even though sometimes it can be fun at times to watch, you know, at question time. But I think we've got to move away from this sort of tit for tat in politics. Now, so, so therefore, so what I'm saying in regards to the, 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 the police bit, I think it is very crucial uh, and it is important for, you know, um, should do that. So what is it? Who can apply now? This is what I, I was looking at some good tips. Now. Who can apply? You, me. Can I apply? Nah, I think I'm too old for that now. <laughs> they said we are looking for people with a range of skills and experience and people from diverse backgrounds and communities. Not limited to any particular age group. Oh, my days. It's, <laughs> I guess I can come in then because they say not limited to age group. Are you guys ready to join the police force? Although you must be over 18. Yeah. And we also welcome people looking for a career change. Do I want a career change? Nah, not really. Not at this time in my life, you know. Qualities we are looking for are people motivated to serve the public, who have common sense and display empathy. Do I need a degree? That's a question which is asked. No, you don't need a degree to join the police. There are three different entry routes and you can join straight from school on apprenticeship if you want to. You need to pass some written tests and need a GCSE in English or equivalent though. Do I have to be fit? Oh, I'm gone, man. <laughs> Do I have to be fit? You must be physically and mentally be able to undertake police duties. And there's a fitness requirement because police officers must be able to move quickly while carrying heavy equipment. Um, if you pass the assessment process, you will then have to take a physical fitness test. All right. To pass, you will need to be reasonably fit and able to run short distances fairly quick. Later, you will also have to pass a medical examination. So, guys, um, everybody on the sound of my voice, uh, I know you're all fit. Michael Mason, Carl Laba, you know, everybody can join the police force now, right? You, you got it there. Yeah? You're all fit. Carl Laba, I know you're always exercising, man, in Birmingham. You're fit and you're ready. How much can you earn? You know, uh, this is something for this work. How much should I? Oh, it, it, it varies reasonable, reasonable, regionally. They say Lancaster police start at 23500 and the London Metropolitan Police starting at a salary is near 30000 Chief constables earn over 100000 though. Most people joining the police aren't motivated by money. And that is something which is mentioned very clearly there. Most persons that join the police force aren't motivated by money. But I tell you one of the reasons why it's so important to join the police force. If you look in the States, you know, many people say that in the States, people, um, and they see the brutality against black people and all those sort of things. Um, I keep saying all those sort of things. It's like, like the, it's like Jacob Reese marks have these things where you shouldn't say that. I keep saying, you know what I have to say. But anyway, um, in the States, you have a lot of police um, being charged for brutality. And there's this saying that a lot of white supremacists, supremacists, join the police force, right? They've got their agenda and they join. Yeah, and I believe that everyone should have an agenda also and join the police force. I believe that black persons should join the police force, and by joining the police force, you have an agenda to make sure that there's fairness. That when you go on the street and you see something happening there, you can actually go in there and you can actually make that difference. You can actually simmer certain things down because you know. I remember watching a movie one time, and uh, I don't remember which movie it was, and the police officer said. I know that man, I know that man, I know him. 
and he, he asked these guys to stand down because he was from the same community or so. I know that man. And they said, are you sure? I know him. And he went and he, he speak to the guy and said, what's going on, Ray Ray? What's going on? He said, I know this man. Okay? And, I, and, and as, a, as, a, as a child care lawyer and in court sometimes, you know, you see, everybody has a particular skill set. And I do believe the reason why things need to be very diverse and different persons join in every aspect, join in politics, join in the police force, join in legal, join in court, um, governors, justices, because you bring something else to the picture. You bring a, another dimension. You know, I remember once I was in, uh, I'm a member of a society of conservative lawyers and, uh, and, and I was invited by Dominic Grieve. Dominic Grieve was a mentor, mentor of mine. Dominic Grieve is, is the MP who is actually giving the, the, <laughs> gave the Prime Minister a hard time. And say, he will bring down the government. He's an ardent remainder, but he's a stickler. Very bright and very shrewd um, gentleman there. And, uh, and, and, and I do recall, I was at this meeting at the House of Commons, and there was Lord Mackay, there was, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Ken Clark, Ken Clark. And, and, and what was very interesting about that, you know, there I was, and I was with my assistant, and they were in this discussion there, talking on particular things. And to the life of me, certain things they were talking about, I'm jack what they were talking about, you know, pick up certain things and whatever like that. But because they were of um, a different school of thought, they were from a, a network, you know, and one didn't understand certain things, but one listened at the same time. Now, if these same gentlemen were in Jamaica and, um, you know, on a different level there, and I may be having discussion with my fellow friends or whatever. They might not understand, but they may be trying to get to understand. So what I'm trying to say, it's so important that we get involved and get into these areas, get into these sectors which we're normally not seeing. And that is why I always talk about being strategically positioned. So let's go to what is the interview like. Monica Lerner said, unique perspective and expertise. Thank you for that. Um, there is an assessment center all candidates have to go through. The interview will be trying to tease out why you join the police and we include role play. We are trying to understand how you make decisions and assess your values and communication skills. The role play can be interesting and is not usually set in a police environment. For example, you might be asked to play to role play someone who's working in customer service in a shopping center. It is all about seeing if you can recognize the issues and solve problems okay so uh, so just setting the stage there in in regards to the the police and and, I, and and it'd be good to hear what you have to say uh would you be encouraging your son your brother your uncle your friend someone who is not working but really have a passion for service would you encourage them to join the police force yeah would you that's a question that you have to ask yourself um, do you do you believe the police, more police, is the answer to the knife crime? Do you believe it's a part of the solution or a part of the answer? It's questions that need to be asked as well. And and what are some of the the key ingredients that you believe that officers should be taught when they go on the road, right, across the board, and also the whole aspect of stop and search. What's your views on that? Because that is something which is going to be crucial because stop and search is something which um, is a very controversial and topical subject. And and while we're talking about that, I did receive um, something from, and I'm going to see if I can find it, from Lee Jasper. If, and it, it, and it's very interesting that I say this now because I, 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 I just remember I need, to, I need to email a lady who actually who actually, um, uh, where is it? I think I have it there. Stop and search. Yeah. A lady who, who contacted me um, saying her son wanted, her son was stopped or something like that. Some, some key points on stop and search. Boris Johnson, um, Lee Jasper sent this out. Urgent stop and search advice. Lee Jasper's former deputy mayor of London. I'm about to breach official secret, like he said. 
Boris Johnson has issued an order to all police across the country demanding massive and immediate increase in the use of stop and search. You know, that's what he says there. Um, but what is more interesting to me is the secret to staying safe during a stop and search is staying calm, right? Now, if anybody's listening here, and I'll give you all these tips here, um, it is there on, on WhatsApp going around. F key and most important thing is stay calm. Don't be baited and be prepared. Off the top shelf, he said, the official secret police training script taught the police officers to ensure that they stay within the law. Stop and search. Go wiser. Police training protocol. Just to mention this protocol and see the reaction. But first, ask them if they have a body cam and is it working? Looking for the red light. Grounds for stop and search. Object the officer is looking for. Warrant, particularly if the officer is in plain clothes. Identification proof that they are an officer. Station the officers are from. Entitlement to a stop and search form and all copies of paperwork. Legal, what legal power are they using? These are questions you can ask. You are being detained for the purpose of having them explain exactly why you are being stopped. Lastly, record or have someone record everything. Ensure you can either start recording or filming immediately your approach. Practice doing this and set up shortcut on your phone for instant recording. This could save you from illegal police violence or false or malicious prosecution. I think one of the key tips that Lee says right here is set up a shortcut on your phone for instant recording. You know, sometimes you might even be driving and you see something and you're trying to get your phone to actually record it. But don't record someone who is on the phone talking because if you record someone on the phone talking or using their phone, you'll be nicked because they'll say, hang on a second, you're recording that person recording or on their phone and you are also doing the same thing. And I believe something happened with someone recently whereby they recorded someone and as a result of that, they got nicked. And another person was recording one time and they crashed as a result. And the person who was there, their recording started to laugh. So be careful about that. So my encouragement, ladies and gentlemen, is to... Um, Join the police force. Um, be a, as a matter of fact, there's going to be jobs going as well. Jobs are going to be going as uh, trainers. And there's going to be lots of um, opportunities, I believe, for persons in diversity and equality and um, racial discrimination and all those sort of things which have to um, teach officers about these things. So it's opportunity. I'll say it's an opportunity at the same time. And it's an opportunity if you go in there and wanting to serve your community and that is very crucial going in there to serve your community and you will see the fundamental reason and maybe your action could actually save someone's life all right now the next one now which i'm going to quickly go on to now and that is the amnesty okay amnesty which is which is crucial all right the Boris Johnson supports amnesty for 500,000 undocumented migrants in the UK. Now, I'm not sure if it is that he supports. I'm not sure if he's actually saying it is something that he mooted. But I know clearly that he said that he didn't have the support at that time. Right? So, but, but he has signaled his support for giving an amnesty to as many as 500,000 undocumented migrants allow them to remain legally in the United Kingdom, right? And if you think about it this way, if there's 500,000 persons illegal in the UK and they're working, and trust me, many people here might know of someone who is here um, illegally or trying to get their stay and get this and so on, and they're working, you know what I'm trying to say? And, you know, and if that money can the tax or whatever like that can come into the system. Even some of them are working illegally and they're paying actual tax as well, you know, because the government is not going to take, not, not going to stop the money from coming in. Trust me. Um, if anyone can tell me if the government will stop the money from coming in, no, they won't stop the money from coming in. So it will be coming in and it will be rolling in as well. So that is something that, um, which, which should be, um, and it would be, that's one of the advantage that they're talking about of this thing. The new Prime Minister, they say, is a long-standing advocate of the move, which he argues will allow long-standing UK residents to work legitimately and to pay their fair share of taxes. 
right? He expressed sympathy for the initiative that London mayor, right? As I mentioned, when he was a mayor, was slapped down by Theresa May when he raised the idea in a cabinet meeting, right? So, so, he, so in his appearance in the Commons, he told MPs that Britain should examine, and this is where I believe the, the vow or the promise maybe is different because what he's talking about economic advantage and disadvantage of allowing an amnesty for migrants living le illegally in Britain. One of the disadvantages that some people have said is that you'll open a floodgate, right? Because many people say, ah, I just need to hang and chill for a while, you know, maybe another amnesty may come around, you know? And it is argued that it was legally anomalous to be theoretically committed to deporting some 500,000 law-abiding people without the proper document. Listen, I came to this country in 1992 as a student. And I remember one year, I went to renew my visa. Um, and I always go down to Luna House, you know, stand in that queue there. Yes, I did that, you know. You know, went there like all oh, 6.30 in the morning. And I always remember this taxi guy, still a friend of mine. Even when I got married and I came back from Jamaica with my wife, he was the one who actually picked me up um, in 2001, <clears throat> you know. And uh, yeah, I went there. And then one year I went there, and I'm so honest, you know. And I was, I was doing some part-time job at a law firm in Brixton, I won't say the name. And, uh, and I was studying at the same time. So, you know, when you're studying, you cannot go more than 20 hours. And I think on the form I put out that I was working over 20 hours or so, silly of me. Well, I was very truthful, you know. Um, I should have just said 20 hours, but I said over 20 hours. So they didn't renew it. And they said, uh, you've got to go back to the law firm and to get a letter that I will not do over 20 hours. You know? And the, the danger, the, the funny thing was that the day that I was renewing it was the day that it expired. So... So that was like a, <clears throat> I think it was like a weekend or so like that. Near to, I think it was a Friday or so. So for the weekend, I was illegal in the UK. <laughs> you know, illegally. I was an illegal alien because, you know, the the the, the visa expired, and um, I had to go back to the law firm and get the letter from them, and then to go back to the home office some other days. I had to line up again. Well, they say you don't have to join the long queue because they got the system there. You know. But for a period of three, four, five days or so, it was legal. But it wasn't, it wasn't like illegally because, you know, it was with an understanding there. But yes, in law, I was illegal, you know. So many people find themselves in situations whereby, unfortunately, they're law-abiding persons, good persons, genuine persons, going about their business, hardworking, have their family. But due to technicalities, sometimes they overstay. And, um, and it's fortunate sometimes that they are penal, penal, penalized, sometimes they are deported, and sometimes they are placed in prison environment with hard, cold criminals sometimes, which is not fair, you know? So I believe it is something that need to be addressed, need to be looked at, and it is something that should be supported. Now, what can the community do now? And this is the part where the community can play. The prime minister said it. And because the Prime Minister said it, it is now for the community and for you now to challenge your members of Parliament and write to your MP and to say, what is the government doing about this? And set out the reasons why it is, you know? Don't just say because John Brown is here and John Brown is a nice guy and blah, blah. But set out the reasons. Set out the re I, think, I think what we may have to do is to do a, a letter or so and share it with the community that people can use it and send to their MPs to show the, the economic advantage. Yeah? Sell it. Sell the economic advantage of the whole process. We've got to play the game. We've got to get on the field and play the game as well. Everyone plays a part. Even if you're not a voter, you still can write to your local members of parliament. And then by that time, then what will happen is that they will always sometimes standing up when you see all those guys standing up in parliament it's because they got questions to the prime minister questions to the prime minister blah 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 ray, ray. um you know and the prime minister responds and say yeah i've been thinking about that and um i'll be looking into that case next week again same thing come again you know question to the prime minister because the community is challenging the prime minister you know 
you know, you all know that I'm a I'm a conservative member. You all know that I voted for Boris. You all know that I will st I stand for elections in previous time. But I believe very strongly one of the reasons why I do this thing is to be strategically positioned so I can be a, a, a part of the process of change. Monica, do a form letter so that people know or do a petition and send it around for signature. Yeah, that that yeah, Monica. That that is something that will will have to be done. I I, I think I think the petition. There's so many petitions which have done this already. I I believe the more personal touch. I, I'm not so much of a fan of petitions that much, but petitions play the role. I believe the personal touch, where someone writes a letter, send it to their MPs, go to their members of parliament in the surgery, in that local constituency, and say to them. This is my concern, you know, and share with them the reasons why. I believe that personal touch is better, right? And I believe that the community and people, whichever community you're from, should do that as a way to sort of, um, you know, equip the process, I believe. Because petition sometimes, it's just like sign a signature, 100,000, 20,000, they, they have a meeting in parliament and they say blah, 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 and that was it. You know, stop the war coalition, millions, you know, you know, which other one was it? Stop Brexit. That one reached a million. They had, they, and nothing came out of it. I believe that that personal touch by getting all of your members of parliament, getting all of your councillors, go through the political system there and challenge them to go to the prime minister and say, what is he do? We cannot let him get out of that, you know. You know, I'm sure I won't, I won't be penalized for putting pressure on the government, but that's what we got to do. So, 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 in, so he was speaking at, uh, ah, and this was, the, I, I, I recall, he was speaking to the Labour MP, Rupa Hock, who asked if he was a man of his word, if he was a man of his word on a subject after he courted popularity with pledging an amnesty for illegal immigrants as London mayor. Now, many people are going to say, did Boris did it for the sake of being liked? As they say, sometimes he liked to be liked, you know. Did he say to court popularity? Because more than likely, you know that it will not happen. But he want to show that he's on the people's side and for people to say, yes, let's get Boris in. And by getting Boris in, Boris will do that. Because many people ask the question, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? If I vote for you, what can you do for me? And many people have that particularly felt need, that felt issues what they want to bring about. And that is very crucial. Everybody has a need. Why should I vote for this person? Right? But guess what? I always have to let the penny drop again at the same time. That you do not vote for Boris Johnson unless you are in his literal constituents. Who you vote for is your members of parliament. Right now in Lewisham, the member of parliament is Janet Davy. Different place in, in, in um, if you live in Islington, you can vote for Jeremy Corbyn. But otherwise than that, you're voting for your members of parliament. And by virtue of such, the one who gets the most vote of all the different MPs, then that person becomes Prime Minister. Whether it is Jeremy Corbyn or Boris Johnson. That is if a next election is called. And I'm going to be doing the next topic at some point as to um, do you think that there should be a, a general election coming soon or you think Boris Johnson should actually carry through. I'm supposed to be having a guest tomorrow night and I'm having another guest from a a Labour friend, <laughs> an aspiring parliamentary candidate on the Labour side, um, will be joining me on Wednesday, all being well, because I want to get a cross-section of different persons, and I want to get someone from the Remain side of the Lib Dem as well, who say they are remaining all the way, and just have some discussion, because I've got to also demonstrate that I'm able to, to hear the different sides, you know? I do hear a different side. Sometimes I think it's rubbish sometimes. I'm <laughs> just kidding. You know? but, but to discuss it so persons can actually listen in and have, have an idea. So, so that, is, that is my take today um, on, on the whole aspect of how these two policies, with the police, more police, and the 500,000 illegal amnesty for, 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 for illegal um, persons who are here illegally, um, to see how they can be regularized. You know? And, um, and and I think it's important. So, ladies and gentlemen, please think about that and um, join me on the next shows as well. Uh, remember to, to like and subscribe to the show and remember to support what I'm doing as I seek to, what do I seek to do? Empower, educate, 
edify and exhort all right and to like and subscribe to the show those on instagram um thank you so much for coming it's a sunday evening um i don't know what the weather is going to be this week but it's going to be fantastic whatever the weather is it's going to be super lucious and fantastic and you got to enjoy it yeah enjoy whatever the weather comes you know and enjoy whatever god has in store for you and be blessed and be highly favored okay and all the best ladies and gentlemen see you on the other side and uh bless up and i'll be back tomorrow night or being well if i have this guest and i'll be back on wednesday night as well and uh while i speak a lot on politics and issues like that message me let me know what other topics would be very crucial to be talked about message me and tell me if you want to be a guest live on the show all the way from the uk as well Ah, something I need to do first. Let me just do this first. I always like to look if person's saying thing.